Hello, welcome to the channel Kids Cloud. Hello friends. Welcome in another new video of Kids Cloud. Today we will learn about water cycle. Before going into detail, let's learn the things which needs to be understand in water cycle. Water cycle is very much important and is one of the process which is responsible for life on earth. Water changes from one state to another either by absorbing energy or releasing energy. Processes involved in this water cycle are evaporation, transpiration, sublimation, condensation, precipitation, runoff and infiltration. Out of 71% of total water, earth is having only about 3% of the water which is fresh water or drinkable. This water cycle is driven by sun that means the essential heat required to complete the cycle is provided by sun. As you all aware, about 71% of earth's surface is covered with water. This water exists in different forms. Oceans hold about 96.5% of all earth's water. Another part of water is in rivers and lakes, in ice caps and glaciers. Water also exists in the air as water vapor. It exists in the ground as soil moisture and in aquifers. Water cycle It is also known as hydrological cycle. It is the cyclic process which describes the journey of water from the earth's surface to the atmosphere and then again back to the ground. This diagram illustrates some of the stages of water cycle. Precipitation, Evaporation, Transpiration and Condensation. But other than these, some more processes also involved in this water cycle. Let's learn these processes in more details. Water cycle comprises the following processes Evaporation, Transpiration, Sublimation, Condensation, Precipitation, Runoff and Infiltration. Evaporation Evaporation is the process by which water changes from a liquid to a gas or vapor due to heat provided by sun. It is opposite of condensation. Water from oceans, lakes, rivers enters into water cycle in the form of moisture through evaporation. About 90% of total water entering in atmosphere through evaporation. Transpiration When there is a precipitation, water falls on the earth's surface get absorbed by soil through plant roots. A part of it is used for photosynthesis. The remaining water is expelled out in the atmosphere through a process of transpiration. Thus, transpiration is the process of water movement through a plant and its evaporation from aerial parts such as leaves, stems and flowers. Sublimation The process by which water changes from a solid state that is either ice or snow to gas without entering in liquid state is called as sublimation. A very small amount of water enters in the atmosphere through this process. Next important process is condensation. Water evaporated in the atmosphere through the process of evaporation, transpiration and sublimation rises up in atmosphere. Due to low temperature at high level, again these water vapors converted back into water droplets 
or solid ice crystals. This process is called as condensation. These rock plates then mix with some dust particles and nucleate. These are called as aerosols. As more water vapor condenses into water droplets, more number of aerosols are formed, which finally results into visible clouds. Another process is precipitation. Clouds grow in air to certain extent. When air cannot hold any more water, precipitation occurs. The water comes down on the Earth's atmosphere in the form of rain. If the temperature is very low, means below 0 degrees, the water droplets fall as snow. Water also precipitates in the form of drizzle, sleet and hail. Runoff After precipitation, the water falls in the form of rain, snow or hail runs over the earth's surface. This is called as runoff. About 35% of this water results into formation of channels, then rivers and ends up into lakes and oceans. Remaining water is absorbed in soil. Last process in this water cycle is infiltration. A part of precipitated water enters into runoff. A small part is either absorbed by the plants and used for photosynthesis. Excess one is expelled out through process of transpiration. Some portion get absorbed in soil and stays there for a longer period until gets evaporated. Another portion moves deep into the soil. This is called as infiltration. This water percolates down and rises groundwater level. It is pure water and is drinkable. This water cycle is very much important in our life. If water cycle disrupted or stopped, life on earth will slowly cease as no organism can live without water. Oceans and lakes will cause global warming. Increase in percentage of carbon dioxide will make air less breathable. Plant life will get disturbed which will affect food chains. Increase in temperature will result into melting of polar ice caps. This will lead to increase in water level. It will eventually disturb the coastal landforms. Due to change in salinity, aquatic life will affected and finally it will die off. So friends, if water will not be there, everything will wipe out from planet earth. No plants, no animals and even we will not able to live our life. So it's our duty to save water and use it wisely, which will eventually help us to protect our planet earth. Thanks for watching this video. For more videos, please subscribe this channel.